gonna we're gonna kick things off with with some introductions. And if you're coming for round two, which we absolutely hope that you are, and um, we will you'll already have met us before. You could have even met us in person. And um, some of you may have already met Sarah at the workshops you ran in, in London a couple of weeks ago. And um, but my name is Katie. I am the strategic partnership manager here at TikTok and I partner with um, organizations like the GBA, the Great British Entrepreneurship Awards and Community, um, to ultimately educate and inspire small, medium businesses and entrepreneurs, just like everyone on this call. Um, and we're really, really excited to kick off workshop two today. And I'm going to hand it over to Sarah to introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, really excited to build on last week's learnings. Um, I work within the High Potential New Business team. So for those of you I haven't met or haven't been on a webinar um, with us before, um, I work of, um, kind of around the strategy creation and help brands um, launch their first campaign on TikTok. So today we'll be going over best practices and especially looking at um, performance campaigns and how to set them up. Yeah, we are very, very lucky to have Sarah here because she is absolutely the expert in getting into the weeds on the Ads Manager platform, which is definitely something um, that we get requested and asked all the time. So delighted to, to kick things off. So for those of you that joined before, as you know, this is definitely something special. It's a very special partnership um, for us here at TikTok. And we've had a wonderful time at lots of events over the past nearly a year which is hard to believe um, and and this boot camp is is just a, a a small part of what we have done um together with with fran and her team so far so all part of this boot camp right the tiktok business boot camp we hope that you're all part of the community please let us know if you are and um, and you know you should all be you entered in there you can kind of speak to us within within there too and um, but ultimately what we want you to learn is building and, and promoting your brand's presence on TikTok, whatever industry or category that you are in. And today is a lot about best practices and guides and getting into the ads manager platform and all will be recorded. So don't worry, you know, give us your full attention and we'll send you the recording afterwards. And, and ultimately we want you to help you to reach new customers and, and grow your business. So to give you a bit of a program overview, so last week we had the start and create with TikTok. So again, that session is recorded. If you missed it, please catch up on it. And it was really just to give you about the why, like why should your business be on TikTok? There was a lot of talk about community there, which we'll touch on again today. And um, the create, which really Louisa brought you through some, some really good sessions and tips on creative, because that is our frequently asked question. It is what we get asked all the time. It's what we know every single business that we work with needs help with. So it's why we wanted to really focus on that. And, and then ultimately today is this growth and performance, right? One thing is if you've figured out your creatives, you've got a plan for them. The next is how do you get action on those? There was some respondents on the Q&A that said they're doing really well organically and it's not converting. And Sarah is going to help you figure out how you can get those conversions uh, today. So to do a bit of a recap, because um, I know it's so hard to remember what happened yesterday, let alone a week ago, and it was a jam fast session, so we'll just bring you through it again. So we say this time and time and again, we are an entertainment platform powered by the community, so it's all about entertainment. You come, you sit down with a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever it is that you like to drink and you watch TikTok. You're not checking to see what your friends or cousin or aunties or uncles are up to. You're checking to see like all about the new content. Um, the latest one that was stuck in my head is this Happy Barra. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's actually great. And I'm delighted for you. But if you do, the Happy Barra, I can see Sarah laughing. It's like this animal that I didn't know existed. And they like seem to be very defiant and like ride on the back of like crocodiles, allig or crocodiles or alligators. I don't know the difference, but it's just like capybara song. Anyway, that was on my for you page all over the weekend. So it's just about got out of my head. Um, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, entertainment platform. So I was entertained by capybara animals over the weekend and ultimately powered by the community. So again, to tie that in, there's a big community on TikTok that love these particular type of animals. And I was a part of that community at the weekend. So the big thing here is the community also loves to shop. So community is important. We all feel the benefits community, um, particularly after the, the challenge of the last few years. But we're businesses, right? Like you're entrepreneurs, you need to succeed. And the really, really important thing to remember is that community loves to shop, right? 
purchase products, services, whatever it is that they want to do. The TikTok made me buy it hashtag is a really, really big part of tapping into your community and even this community itself to ultimately get those um, conversions. Um, please feel free to submit your questions or, or chats. Um, if you have them there, use the Q&A feature or the chat feature. And, and please let me know if anyone knows what I'm talking about from the capybara thing, because um, it would be wonderful to know I'm not alone in, in that one. Um, okay, so whistle stop tour of the creative um, top tips. So Louisa brought you through these in, in a bit more detail last week. But ultimately, if you kind of follow by these six S's, um, it really, really gives you a good overview of what to look out for when you're, you know, you're maybe taking your first video for TikTok or you've been on TikTok for a little while and you want to bring it up to the next level. So try and focus on two to three of these. I know it's hard to do all six and, um, you know, say it directly showing it off so show off your product and service don't forget about like you are selling all of the time even if you're just you know doing a funny video in in the office you're still selling your brand and your service and um, sub it so the captions can be great i know sometimes if you're on a bus and you don't have your earphones you want to listen to tiktok or watch tiktok without the noise and, and the captions are a great way to do that and um, and then the call to action is really really important there too what is it that you want people to do buy sell click on a link, whatever it is, don't be afraid to actually spell that out for them. Um, okay, Emma is also on Capybara TikTok, thank God. And I knew Sarah was laughing too, so she knows what I'm talking about. Um, it is a very catchy song, is all I'm gonna say. I won't sing it for you because that would be dreadful. That would be even worse than the song being stuck in my head. Um, okay, so another thing we get asked all the time, do I need to have a TikTok account? So the account on your phone where you're posting your videos is the account and an advertising account. And ultimately the answer from us, from a best practice perspective is yes, that's what works best together. And um, you know, you can post on TikTok and run some of those videos as an ad, and we're gonna go into a bit more detail on that later. But ultimately that long-term impact and setting yourself up for success over the next few years is gonna come from combining both of those efforts. And Sarah is really gonna focus on the paid um, side of things today. And she's worked with, I would say hundreds of businesses now at this point, Sarah, um, getting them getting them scaled up and, and getting them to the next level. So she really, really is the, the expert in this department. And um, Creative Center, we, into, we went into a bit more detail on this on the Q&A on Friday, also recorded. And I showed you how to use it a little bit, like click around and, and find various things. Honestly, if you just go to search for Creative Center TikTok, um, you'll you'll work your way around it, no problem. It's a great resource for research and just checking out what's happening in your industry um, and also in, in the United Kingdom generally. Ad can be an objective, so I'm not going to spoil Sarah's section, but this is kind of what we touched on the last time. It's really just to have a look at, you know, what is it that your business wants to achieve? You know, is it... Um, reaching new customers is it just building your community or is it ultimately that conversion and sales and that's what we're going to touch on later targeting capabilities so again Sarah's going to talk on this but we wanted to just give you an insight into who you can target um, and reassure you that your audience and your community and your new and existing customers are on TikTok you just We'll have to see it to believe it and get yourselves on there, but they are absolutely on TikTok and it is worth um, exploring for your business. Um, Spark ads, we touched on very briefly. I'm gonna bring you through um, near the end of the session, like a, a much more in-depth um, overview of what they are. And, and we also asked you to do some homework. So the homework is really structured and very carefully designed by Sarah and her team. Um, because she, as I said, have worked with hundreds of businesses in the UK. And we are talking about businesses from education to service-based to cosmetics, to food and drink, to you name it. She's worked with all types of industries. And we wanted to prepare um, the homework. We won't play the TikTok again. So just go. I've got... But, um, it's in the first one. It's a it's a great one. And um, it was really prepared with your best interest in mind. So no matter what type of business you are, because I know we get asked about this all the time, you know, I'm service or I'm a lead gen company versus e-com. Like, do you have any advice? These are an absolutely great foundation for you to build your, your TikTok strategy on. And in particular, this is what we're going to develop by today. So what are your goals? Like, always remember that. Um, who are your target profiles? So the targeting, like who is your audience that you want to target and you currently target? 
And then ultimately, what can we do to help you from an ad solution standpoint? So please, please fill this out. Um, the PDFs have been provided um, and you can print them out, do them whatever way you want, just write it on a piece of paper. Um, and if you got, get a call from your TikTok representative in the next few weeks, this is a great start for those conversations and, and it makes it very efficient. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over um, to Sarah for um, our workshop too, which is Perform and Grow. Um, and she's going to bring you through the, the next few sections. Great. Thanks, Katie. Thank you for the recap. And hopefully we can build on some of the things that we touched on last week. So um, if you just want to pop onto the next slide. Today, we're all going, we're going to really prepare you on how to ace the auction. So TikTok advertising is an auction based platform. And so I'll go into a little bit of more detail on that. So here are the six key levers on how to ace performance ads on TikTok. And we'll go into each one of these in more detail. But just kind of these are almost your roadmap onto how to, you know, perform well and, and get those um, conversions ultimately as well. So the first thing we want to do is share signals. So that's kind of all around reporting, setting up pixels, for example. Um, and we'll go into more detail on that as well. Then we'll move into how to set up a campaign based on your goals and objectives and how to target the right audience while doing so. And we touched a little bit on that last week and that was part of the homework. So we can build a bit more in depth um, uh, into that as well. Then we'll look a little bit more around creatives and more around optimizing creatives. So, um, you know, how we can get the best ones suited to the campaigns and really drive those either uh, conversions or maybe it's brand awareness. Um, and then how we can test and learn, because we, we like to have a test and learn mindset um, here at TikTok. So, you know, we want to try something out and then either, you know, optimize it or maybe we might need to make some changes. So how to really adapt um, and optimize the performance of your campaigns. Perfect. So on the next side, I'll go into signals. So this is really the foundation of performance um, campaigns on TikTok. So whether you're maybe an e-commerce brand, normally we recommend having a pixel. Um, so we do have different methods of installing pixels. So we can manually set up a pixel onto your website, or we do have integrations with um, many partners. So such as Shopify and WooCommerce. Um, if your website is built on one of these platforms, it's really simple integration. It's just a one-click um, integration really. And then we can get all the, the reporting and uh, measurement as well. Um, then we can you know, have um, events API as well for your website if, if that's kind of the preference. Then if you have an app, we can do, um, we, we have integrations with different MMP partners. So that's for those of you who maybe don't um, have apps, that's a mo mobile measurement partner. And it's basically a pixel for your app. And um, so we have lots of information on how to set, you know, your, your pixel up either through partner um, or through manual installation. Um, and that's all available to through our TikTok ads help center. And we can share um, the link to that in a follow up um, email or maybe at the end in the Q&A as well. Perfect. So, Katie, if you want to go to the next one. Um, here we'll look at how to set up the campaign. So if um, you remember last week, we based off um, you know, the campaign objectives based and matched to your business objectives. So for example, if your goal was to build brand awareness, then we would look at doing a reach campaign. But for conversion objectives, so you know, getting people to your website or actually getting those sales through, we recommend using a traffic campaign or a web conversion campaign. We also have TikTok shop conversion campaigns, which are a great asset if you have TikTok shop set up. And um, so for a traffic campaign, the primary objective is getting as many users to the, the website as possible. Um, and then with web conversions, we can optimize a little bit differently. So we can actually drive people to the website, um, but also optimize toward, towards maybe view content. So viewing a, per, um, a particular product on your website um, or taking an action such as add to cart or even complete payment. Now, initially, we would optimize towards something like view content and work our way down and um, towards complete payment. And that's just to kind of build up the data um, and events on the pixel as well. Then in terms of um, app marketing, um, maybe if you want to drop in the chat, if you're, you know, you are an app promoter um, or your business has an app. Um, but what we can do with app promotions are, you know, we can um, optimize towards installs um, or in-app events as well. So, for example, if 
you have, um, you know, a subscription in app, we can optimize towards that um, down the line as well. Um, so that's a great feature as well on TikTok. And yeah, perfect. And this is just a recap that um, Katie went through earlier. But just really wanted to highlight, you know, all the different objectives that we have um, and, you know, how they align with your business goals and needs. Um, so, again, upper funnel would be kind of reach and video views. Um, I know we had a question um, in the chat about B2B um, advertisers. So maybe a lead generation campaign would be great there to get all of the capture all of the um, users details. And it's through an in-app in form as well. Um, and you can integrate your CRM. Um, to our TikTok ads managers to, to gather all of that data after the campaigns. Um, so that's a really great um, uh, option for B2B um, advertisers. And then, as I mentioned, traffic, driving as many people to the website, um, app and web conversions as well, and then community interactions. So for the, those of you who weren't on the call last week, um, we do have a community interaction objective, which allows us to optimize to, to either TikTok profile visits or TikTok profile followers. So that's a great way if you're just starting out on TikTok and, you know, building your profile community is a great way to, you know, promote promote your videos, but also um, get those followers um, for long term um, growth, because as Katie mentioned, you know, organic and paid do go hand in hand. Great. So Katie, if you just want to pop onto the next page here. Um, this is kind of how we will uh, generally structure our um, TikTok campaign. So we start off and the top layer would be the campaign. So our objective for this instance, I'll, I'll um, talk about a traffic campaign. So say that my objective is to get as many people as po possible to my website. Um, I will select the traffic campaign. Then after um, that, I will go down to the ad group and I can have maybe one or two ad groups. And, you know, it could be targeting, um, you know, uh, younger females with an interest in beauty and then my second ad group could be targeting males and the reason I might split those out would be because of the different products that I'm advertising um, and the creatives that I have so Kitty if you just want to go to the next slide it will show this in a little bit more detail so yeah the campaign level is kind of the first level and as we mentioned that's where you basically set your objective really um when we're going through the ads manager, I'll, I'll show a demo later, but this is, you know, a very quick um, uh, decision and we just need to name the campaign at this at this stage. Then we'll go down to the ad group and this is where we'll have, you know, our placement. So we're going to um, run the ads on TikTok and um, in the location, for example, the United Kingdom um, and then our demographic targeting as well. So age and gender um, and then interests and behaviors as well. Um, I would also, you know, here is where we will schedule the, the bit bidding um, and optimization as well. So we usually um, set the budget at the ad group level, and this just gives a bit more um, consistent control over the budget um, because we'll have it at the daily level. So we'll know what it's going to spend on a daily, um, a daily basis. Um, and then we would also suggest using um, lowest cost bidding strategy initially as well, because we find that to be um, the best value for money. And then at the ad level, this is where we'll upload the creative. So either use Spark ads um, or um, in-feed ads um, and create, you know, select our maybe top three to five creatives and um, adding captions and sound as well. So if you want to um, pop over, Katie, if there's also any questions that might be relevant, please feel free to shout them out. I, I can't read them at the moment. Um, but yeah, feel free to keep um, the questions going in the chat. I see some coming in, which is great. So when we talk about um, targeting, you know, it's really important for us to connect with our target audience. And you might find that, you know, actually you may have discovered a brand new audience on TikTok or you want to reach a new audience, um, you know, on our platform than what you have um, previously on others. Um, so we do have different ways of targeting users. So as I mentioned, we can um, target by, you know, demographic information, just such as age and gender, um, and then interests and behaviors and hashtag interactions as well. So, for example, if you're, you are a beauty brand, we might target um, females age 18 to 55 who have an interest in uh, beauty and skincare um, or cosmetics, and um, they may have liked um 
beauty and skincare vid videos in the past seven days. And we can also target by those who maybe um, uh, interact with the hashtag beauty talk or hashtag skin talk as well. So that really allows us to have quite niche targeting based on all the interactions that the user is having on the platform. So that's our first method of targeting um, the users. Then we can move on to a little bit more um, customized targeting, so such as um, building custom um, and lookalike audiences as well. So we can do this by uploading, if you have an email list um, of you know, your users, we can upload um, this onto our ads manager platform and target those who have matching um, TikTok profiles to the email addresses that you have uploaded. So that's a great way um, of targeting maybe your existing users. Um, and then we can also do previous campaign interactions. So based on, say, um, a campaign you ran last week, we can target users who have um, maybe watched a video to 50% um, in the ad. We can maybe target those who clicked on the ad um, or took some sort of action as well. So that's a really great way to, to kind of build retargeting audiences and, you know, that shows that those users either have high engagement or high intent. So we want to, you know, target them a bit more um, and we can even create lookalike. So those who act in a similar manner to those who, who took the action and engaged with your video. And um, so that's a great way. And of course, then we have smart targeting. So this kind of falls under automatic targeting which we have for um, available for lower funnel campaigns. And this really puts um, the faith in the algorithm, which, you know, as you know, if you're on TikTok and um, the algorithm is really powerful and sometimes knows you a little bit more than you even know yourself um, and, you know, can really target those people. And um, so it always shows you what you're interested in. So that's kind of the smart targeting. So some really great tools that we have available to us to make sure that we, you know, really target those who we, who we want to, to interact with our ad. And Katie, if you just want to pop to the next slide. These are, again, just to highlight some of our other targeting capabilities. Um, so, for example, here, as I mentioned, we have the demographic interest based. If you're an app um, publisher or promoter, we can do by um, device and make a model. Um, and then we have our smart targeting as well. And we do have targeting recommendations. So if you are stuck, our ads manager will prompt you as well. Um, and it will guide you along, you know, if you're selecting an audience that is too narrow, it will let you know and make recommendations as well. So um, yeah, that's all available in the ads manager. Perfect. And then in terms of getting the most out of our budget with bidding and optimization, we have different um, bid strategies and ways to optimize both our budget um, and get a, you know, a positive um, ROAS. So we have different bid strategies available. So this we can have Kind of a cost cap or a bid cap and um, when you're looking at auction based um performance ads and then lowest cost as well so lowest cost is usually one um that we would suggest starting out with um and this kind of will bid on the the lowest available um cost as well so a great one starting out and then once you're looking at optimizing you can go into a little bit more advanced and um, bid strategies um, then we have um, VBO, which is value-based optimization. So this um, feature delivers ads to consumers, which are most likely to spend the maximum amount on your products. So this is you know, a great way to kind of maximize the return that we are getting from our ads as well um, in terms of conversion campaigns. And then campaign budget um, optimization. So this optimizes the budgets at the campaign level and make sure that, you know, it um, puts the budget towards the, the top performing campaign and ad groups as well. And um, so a really great way there. And then, Katie, if you just want to pop on to the next slide. Um, we can also go on to a little bit more about bidding and optimization. And I mentioned this in a previous um, slide, but this is we can optimize towards different actions um, within campaigns. So, for example, when we're going to do a conversion campaign for driving people to your website, we can optimize towards different actions. So, for example, um, if we're optimizing towards um, view content or page view, um, the ad will be served to those who are most likely to take that action. So, um, for example, we can then optimize towards view content and optimize towards um, complete payment and add to cart as well. Um, so it's, you know, optimizing to sending the ad towards those who are likely to take more of a, a lower funnel action rather than those who are just going to view and engage with your ad in that way. 
Um, so really great. And again, with um, app campaigns as well, we can do not just installing the apps, but take an app with uh, take an, uh, perform an action or take an event within the app as well. So we can optimize towards those. And now in terms of bidding and budget to drive action, this, there's lots of different ways um, on where we can set the budget, how we can bid, um, and what kind of times of the day that we can um, we can uh, serve our ad as well. So in terms of the different options for um, budget, we can set the budget at um, the campaign level and choose lifetime budget. So for example, if you have a campaign that you've allocated £3,000 to over the course of a month, um, you can set that at the campaign level so that it will never go past that. But I would also recommend then creating a daily budget um, at the ad group level. So say, um, you know, dividing that up um, among the 30 days and setting that daily budget. And that will just allow a more consistent spend um, rather than having spikes every so often um, in the spend. It just, you know, we're, we're capping it off so it never re um, goes over our um, total budget, but it gives it a consistent spend within that um, within that lifetime. Then we move on and, you know, there might be different um, suitabilities in terms of the bidding that is used. But as I mentioned, the one that I would recommend initially would be lowest cost um, and just using that at the ad group level as well. Um, and that will just kind of maximize performance um, and create the best value for money that you're getting. We can also choose, oh, <laughs> sorry, Katie. Um, we can also just choose um, specific days or times for our ads to be run. Um, I think um, I speak for a lot of people who use TikTok. I mean, I could use it any time of the day, um, you know, right up at like just before I go to bed, when I wake up, probably also during work, which I maybe shouldn't say on, on a meeting that's being recorded. But, you know, there is no kind of specific time that people use TikTok. There are peaks and troughs. Um, but initially, I would kind of set this as, you know, having no limit to when your ad can be served. Um, you will actually be able to have a look and see the breakdown of results of when your ad is um, being served the most and when you're getting the highest engagement and then refine accordingly. Um, but really, TikTok isn't one of those things that, um, you know, is only watched at certain times of the day. It's kind of all the time. Um, unless for a specific reason, um, your, your um, product or service um, is should be seen within certain hours. Yeah, Katie, all day is best. <laughs> Great. And on TikTok, um, as with other platforms, we do have a learning phase. So this is really important to keep in mind when you are running your first campaigns. Um, the learning phase takes around seven to 10 days or 50 events. Um, and this is really so the algorithm can kind of figure out um, you know, who is interacting with your ad, how we can optimize the performance and get the res best results for you ultimately. And um, one thing to note is, you know, when we are going through the learning phase, um, you know, it, it is ramping up. The, the performance is, you know, getting stronger as we go. So, you know, just to keep that in mind that if you aren't seeing, you know, the same conversions that you are um, on other platforms within the first, you know, 24 to 48 hours. It's not something to worry about. It's just, you know, the learning phase that we're going through. And once, you know, the algorithm understands what's happening, then it will maximize performance. Um, but it's really important that within those first seven to 10 days um, or 50 events that we don't make too many significant changes. So that could be anything from changing the targeting and um, changing the URL or creatives. Um, and any you know significant changes in budget or bids. Um, rather, we would like you know to take time setting it up, make sure that we're we're happy using all the best practices. Um, and then once you know you you launch the campaign and kind of seven to ten days in, you can optimize from there. Maybe make a few changes, um, and you'll start to see the the performance um, getting a little bit better than after that learning phase. Perfect. So, Katie, if you want to pop to the next slide. Um, we can also do, as I mentioned, you know, test and learn mindset is so important on TikTok. Um, and I think that goes with TikTok in general. You know, people are early adopters trying new things and it goes the same with ads. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we are having the best performance possible um, and we want to optimize our campaigns accordingly as well. So I suppose there's no one secret formula to advertising on TikTok. So 
it's basically making we need to make informed decisions based on um, the performance um, of your, your campaign. So there's different things that we can do. We can look at the insights and reporting from the campaigns that you've run. This is all available through the ads manager. You can get a detailed breakdown of um, the performance um, and the different metrics and KPIs as well. Um, we can also see through the pixel, you know, people who are taking um, specific um, actions on your website and the attributed events as well. Um, and then we can also do things like split tests um, to really see, you know, what's working and how we can optimize the campaigns accordingly. Now, um, we'll just move on to pixel setup. And as I mentioned, you know, we do have um, more detailed um, setup guides, which we can share with you after this um, webinar um, and ones that are suitable as well. So whether that be, you know, your website's built on Shopify or WooCommerce, or if it's not, um, there's going to be different um, instructions for you there as well. Um, but it's pretty important that, you know, we do have the pixel set up and that's the key to success for the performance campaigns. Um, actually, when you're used doing a traffic or a conversion campaign, you need a pixel to be able to run these. And um, so it's important that it's on the website, but also set up correctly, because with the, the pixel, we can build um, marketing audiences, I mentioned. So maybe those who have, you know, added to cart on your website, we can we can look at retargeting those. And um, it helps us then to optimize ad delivery. And look at retargeting too, and then also measure the campaign performance because we want the campaign to be a success, and this is really how we can see how it's performing. Um, so Katie, if you just want to pop to the next slide, um, as I mentioned, these are the three ways that you can um, install a pixel. So manual pixel installation, um, we will share the guides with you. Um, if maybe there's a developer on your team and they could set this up for you, or there will be a step-by-step -step guide as well. Then we have partner integration. So not just Shopify, we also have WooCommerce, um, uh, Square, we have lots of other um, different partners as well that, um, and we'll share the list of, with you. And there's um, basically a one-click integration for all of them really. Um, and then Google Tag Manager Pixel installation as well, which a lot of our clients opt for too. Um, so perfect, Katie, if you just wanna move on to the next slide here, um, we'll just do a quick recap of kind of you know, what is next and next steps, especially in terms of pixels. So um, Katie's also already brought you through some of the creative and um, best practices. And I know we already had as homework create a creative brief. So hopefully some of you got um, got creative and made a few TikToks that could potentially be used for ads. Um, and then, it, you know, next step is to set up the pixel. So as I mentioned, we will share all the guides with you. Once you set up the pixel, we would um, suggest to enable cookies and um, automatic advanced matching just to allow for better performance and reporting as well. Then you will need three pixel events um, within it. So that could be um, add to cart, um, complete payment and uh, view content or page view as well. They would be three that we recommend um, because, you know, it just allows for better performance and um, for the campaigns and different optimization um, events that we can optimize toward, towards um, when we set up the initial campaigns. And then we can test. It's really important to test that the events are firing and that the pixel is set up correctly. Um, because after going to all the trouble of setting it up, we want to make sure that it actually is working um, because that will help us with our, our reporting and attribution as well. Um, and there's um, a feature um, which you can get this link um, for at the bottom just to make sure everything's set up and running OK. Perfect. So Katie, if you just want to pop to the next slide. Um, and I think I'll pass it over to you now. <laughs> Yeah, super. So Sarah, you can go in and double check what I was saying in the chat. If my um, my product knowledge is, is still up to speed. Um, but basically that is, it's a whistle stop tour of, of all of the ads manager functionalities, which I know in a PowerPoint presentation can seem there's a lot of information, but Sarah is going to go through setting up a relatively straightforward campaign and you know when we're in there you can ask us if you want us to show us what this button does or whatever but I do find um whenever you actually see the ads manager platform yourself it comes together a lot easier and it's just very easy to see what the options are and, and how you can set it up but um it's it's great the session will be recorded so you can kind of go back and pick up on the little tips and tricks that Sarah said because honestly there's been so many um but it, I think once you see the demo it really kind of comes all together 
So from a strategy perspective, so this is kind of something that um, we advise to because if you're going to give TikTok a go, it is really, really great to come up with a plan, whatever that plan will be. So the homework that we provided is a great way for you to form the foundations, right? You set your goal um, and then you're able to, you know, think of all the things that you want to try from an ad solution standpoint and a creative standpoint, you know, your video ideas, and, and the way that, that we, we recommend it and from a planning perspective is the testing and learning phase, which Sarah touched on, is it's going to take a little bit of time. And we can't give you the amount of time because some people is, you know, post a video and run an ad and it's just going swimmingly for them. And other people, it takes a little bit of time. So the averages there are all over the place. But from your business perspective, if you go in with a plan, we definitely see like higher results from a learning perspective. Um, you want to be boosting. So what this boosting here is kind of refers to from your ads. So if you're posting organically, you then boost them and, and then you kind of continue on that momentum. So if something is doing well from a video perspective, you recreate the video in another way or use the learnings and you reboost that again or, or you run a Spark ad. Um, but it's ultimately to kind of have this always on strategy and using your TikTok app, so your profile and your ads manager kind of together to do that. So from an, a TikTok solution standpoint, so Sarah touched on a lot of the targeting, a lot of the signals. So how you track what you're up to, how you target your customers effectively. I'm gonna to touch really briefly on the types of ad solutions that we have, so the ad types. And um, so what is a regular in-feed ad? You know, that's like gobbledygook to anyone outside of TikTok. TikTok. Like, what does that mean? Spark ad, same thing. It's, it's a bit like, what on earth do you mean by that? Interactive add-ons we'll touch on. Sarah mentioned it in session one, but we're going to go through it again. And then um, I don't think we actually talk about collection ads, but we'll just run through everything anyway. So auction ads, right, are if you imagine that you're scrolling through and me at the weekend, all of my capybara content and Elma too, who said it was on her feed. Throughout all of that content, there's going to be ads that feature, right? So the, the example here is like the video of the pug, looks like someone dancing, another TikTok video then you've got an ad and it's not necessarily every three videos, but it's every couple of videos that you're going to see those ads appear in your for you page. And, and those videos or, or ads are, are featuring in your in feed. So it's your for you page and your ads are featuring there. What that means is if you go to your ads manager platform, which you're going to set up hopefully today and this week, and then you run your first ad and you don't have a TikTok app, like, so you don't have a profile, you don't have a business account yet on your phone, and you just upload a video and you run that as an ad, that becomes an in-feed ad. So same thing, every couple of videos you see an ad, and when you upload that from your video, this is where your ads live. All of your ads live within the, in, like, your For You page, but in-feed videos are just uploaded directly from your computer. Um, and we'll kind of now talk a little bit um, in detail about those. So all of the ads are in that for you page. So just to go back, whenever you open up your TikTok account, and you're scrolling through and you see those ads, everything lives within that. Um, and then based on those ads that you're seeing, there's lots of different types of ads, right? So on other platforms and, and other things that we're used to, you have different sizes and formats on the page. On TikTok, it's all within that for you page. So the regular in feed is, as I said, you go to your, you create your TikTok ads manager account at the end of the day, you upload a video and you're like, I'm going to run this as an ad. We don't have a TikTok profile yet, but we're going to run this as an ad. And um, so that appears in your for you page. And then you've got like all of the things that you'll have seen from an ads perspective. You can have your logo here, your brand name, whatever it is. And, and that will run, you know, very simply. And anytime that anyone clicks on anything, they're brought through to your website whatever website that you input into there. From a Spark Ads perspective, so this is slightly different. So again, it looks the exact same, like from a user perspective, you can't tell any different. And, and instead of just uploading the video from your computer or your phone, you link it from your TikTok account. So at Katie TikTok, if that was my TikTok account, and I did a video of Sarah and I promoting this webinar and we're like, hey, Let's run an ad to, to target all the entrepreneurs in the UK. We would use that video as an ad. So we just pull it from there. And the main difference is here, if someone clicks it at Katie TikTok, they're brought through to my profile. 
Whereas on the other one that's just uploaded from your computer, if you do at Katie TikTok, there's no link here. So it's a very straightforward way of thinking about it. Sarah will probably show us a little bit of a different way to do it. She's not in there when we set it up, but it's just to show you the different ad types that there are. So Spark ads are our biggest recommendation, right? And if you've got your organic profile, so it's just your TikTok profile and your phone set up, it's a great way to kill two birds at one stone, right? Because if you're already posting videos, let's use those as ads when you're getting started to see what's working and push it out in front of the, the right people. And the word native is used here because it's very like, um, and I'll just jump back. It's native because it's just living within this for you page, right? As soon as you open the app, it's just living within all that content. And sometimes people don't even notice it's an ad um, and they're you know watching and engaging with it, which is great. So how does Spark Ads actually work? So you prepare the video asset. So you either you use a video that you already have posted on your account, you know, of, you know, whatever it is that's posted, or you kind of create a video that you're going to post onto there. And then what you're going to do is you set up the campaign, which Sarah is going to show us how to do. So say we use this webinar as an example, we want to set up a um, conversion campaign targeting entrepreneurs in the UK. Um, and we want them to register for this webinar. That's our call to action. So Sarah and I will have done a video together, you know, where we're going to talk about the webinar, what we're going to cover. And in the end, we're going to be like, sign up for the webinar. And we're going to post that on my profile. So whenever we set up the campaign, we link this all back together, which Sarah will show you. And you use that as your ad. So as you can see, it kind of all makes sense and it ties everything together. And then ultimately you launch that campaign um, and that's kind of the, the end to end start to finish on that one. So there's two ways to generate your Spark ads. So you can do this under your brand account. So at Katie TikTok, the video talking about the webinar, that's one way we can do it. Or um, a creator. So say we were working with one of you as a creator, you know, because you're a business on TikTok and you're you know, either you're doing really well already or you want to do well and you want to promote the webinar, we would ask one of you to create a TikTok and we would use your TikTok um, to promote um, and add it to the campaign. So there's two different um, there's two different ways that you can do it there. So again, normal ads that the user sees, but it can come from my profile or yours promoting the same product or service. And it will all become clear when we jump into the ads manager because um, I know it's hard to visualize. So that's Spark Ads, that's one thing. So the interactive add-ons are, are slightly different um, and they're another feature basically that you can use on whatever videos you're uploading or Spark Ads that you want to use. So if you see them as like an extra engagement function, that, that's kind of the way that I like to see them. So um, they're basically a sticker, like a, a little thing that you can add on to your ads. So the first one is a countdown sticker, right? So very, very relevant around sales or like the Olympics are coming up next year. I don't know if you want to do a countdown to the Olympics. It's the first event I thought of, or, you know, around Christmas time, Black Friday, Christmas or Easter, whatever it is that's really important to your business. You can create this sense of urgency through the countdown, you know, like last chance to get your early bird tickets or whatever it is. And um, for Ideas Fest, for example, and um, you can use this sticker and it's really easy to add on to your video once you're in the ads manager. The second thing is a bit more of like just an engagement thing. So from a voting perspective, you know, do you prefer um, videos with captions or without captions? Could be something that you ask or it could be something about your product and service. You know, do you prefer shampoo or conditioner? And from a service perspective, you know, again, whatever's relevant to your business, it's, it's without us knowing exactly what your business is, it's hard for us to come up with this. But I'm sure there's, there's a, a polling question that you can come up with. And the gift code sticker, so this is super, and Sarah kind of mentioned it in the last one, and I didn't, I didn't even realize. So say that the code is TikTok 10 for 10% off, you're able to copy that immediately. So then whenever they click on the download button here, and then they go into your app or website and they complete the purchase, you can automatically, when you go to paste, the, the discount code will be there, which is great um, for that one. Um, display card this is just a bit of like it's almost like a banner but it's like a real like showcase like you've got a sale on your you know whatever it is that example was quite good there but it's really just a um another way to showcase like 
what you're doing in the video in, in this little call out here. So again, we've got the countdown sticker, great for seasonality or kind of creating a sense of urgency. The voting sticker, it's just really good for like having a bit of fun with the audience and seeing what they engage with. Um, and all that engagement's help with the ad ranking and, and everything else. Gift code sticker, again, just good if you if you do discounts or promotions and even if it's once a year. Um, and then the display card is a bit of like a, just to grab people's attention. So we have flown through, so I'm sure, because we wanted to make sure that Sarah had plenty of time um, for the live demo at the end. So I am gonna stop sharing my screen and Sarah is going to jump to share her screen and I will kind of read out the questions as they come in. Sarah, if there's anyone um, that asks a specific question um, on the ads manager in particular, um, but I can see Sarah got back to everyone there, which is great. Perfect. Yeah, please feel free to ask any questions as we go here. Um, so this is a demo account. So, um, you know, if this looks a little bit funny, please um, disregard it. But this is kind of how your TikTok ads manager account should look. Um, so we'll have just to give you an overview um, a dashboard here. And this is where you're going to be able to see um, the campaign performances kind of at um, a summary level. Um, so you'll see your active campaigns, any that maybe are out of budget, any disapproved for this, it's a demo account, that's why there's so many, um, and any underperforming, which is actually great because um, the ads manager platform will actually tell you ways that you can actually optimize the campaigns so that they, they are performing um, optimally. Um, but we can see all of these here, and that's kind of where you'll get an overview. Um, and then in reporting as well, you can get um, a lot more information on how your campaigns are performing. So to set up an ad campaign, what we'll do for the, the purpose of this demonstration, as we've been talking about performance campaigns, we'll do a traffic campaign um, and in, say, the beauty and skincare industry. So I'll pretend that we're being um, a makeup brand um, and how we would go about setting it up. So you would start with create a um, campaign. So create a new campaign and here traffic. So you can see all our different objectives um, that are available to us. So everything from reach, video views, community interaction. And then we have website conversions as well and product sales. So this would be integrated with TikTok shop. Um, so for example, here at traffic campaign, we would set the name. So um, traffic campaign, uh, March, 2023. Just anything that helps you to identify what the campaign is. You might have specific naming requirements. You can pop these in here, but it's more for your own um, your own um, ability to be able to recognize it. Um, we don't have any special um, ad categories here. Um, and I would suggest that we set the campaign budget, or set, sorry, set the budget at the ad group level. So that's all we have to do on this stage is just pick our campaign and change the name as well. And then we'll go into the ad group. So I'm going to say interest-based targeting and then makeup. So I want users to go to my website um, because I don't have an app. Um, and I'm going to click click select placement. So um, TikTok also has um, a sister app called Pangle, but we're going to unselect that because we just want it um, on TikTok personally, or firstly. Then we can see on the right hand side our available audience. Um, so it's fairly broad at the moment, which is a good sign because this is my first campaign on TikTok. So I wanna keep it somewhat broad so then I can analyze the results and refine accordingly. So initially, we have custom targeting and automatic targeting as well. Um, automatic, as I mentioned before, um, kind of puts um, the um, targeting into the algorithm's power um, so that you can only refine by the, the location and then the rest will be up to the algorithm. But for the purpose of today, we'll do custom targeting. Um, and usually this is what we would recommend. Um, if you do have um, the ability to do two ad groups, we would suggest doing one automatic and then one custom as well. So for this, I will say my target audience are females um, of these um, age brackets. Um, and I can keep an eye on the right-hand side to make sure that there's um, enough available audience. 
If we did have any custom or lookalike audiences, we can include or exclude them here. So that's what these are for. Um, and here is where we're, we'll do interests and behaviors. So for example, here, um, I will go in and do beauty and personal care, and I can even refine that further than beauty and personal care. Um, so I might do cosmetics, skin care, um, and hair care for the purpose of this. Then I can also, so that's what they're interested in. Then maybe um, if I go down to video interactions, I could do um, beauty and care. Um, and you can see the audience size for each of these um, subsections too. Then again, creator interactions. So if they've interacted with certain creators in certain industries, and then hashtag interactions as well. So you can search for different things. For this, I might look at um, makeup. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, that doesn't seem to be coming up sometimes. It slightly glitches, of course, when I'm doing the demonstration. Um, but let me try again. Okay, so you can see the different interests here. Um, with the hashtags, I think it's just having a bit of a, a moment, um, but I'll leave it there. But you can um, refine by each of the hashtags. Um, it has quite a lot of hashtags. So, you know, no matter how niche your um, product or service is, you can, you can look that up. Um, it's great to see any creators in your industry and what hashtags they're using um, and kind of, you know, you can you can use those in your targeting too. So at the moment, we have a balanced, um, uh, we've balanced audience available to us. We've um, refined by interest and video interactions. And now we'll move down for this particular, um, you know, um, product I'm looking at beauty and skincare. It doesn't really matter what um, operate, operating system the user is on. Um, because we're not, you know, promoting an app or anything like that. Um, so say my budget, I set that at um, 50 USD. Um, I just want to, yeah, 50 USD per day. You can change the billing when you're setting up um, your ad account. So for example, this would probably be GBP um, for the most part. Um, and then I'll set my daily budget there. Um, I always recommend putting um, the schedule as run ad group continuously after today because then you can toggle the um, campaign on and off um, whenever you need to rather than setting and limiting yourself to a date range. As we mentioned, TikTok um, you know, is watched at all times of the day, so I'll keep it on departing at um, all day. And my optimization goal here is going to be click. So I'm going to get them to click through um, where I can also do landing page view. So in this case, I might do landing page view um, and it's going to optimize and um, deliver the ads to those who are most likely to um, go to my uh, website. And then again, lowest cost and um, bidding strategy. Have there been any questions so far, Katie, in the chat? Nothing specifically. Um, there is a question here about what's TikTok stats for age demo 35 onwards. So you, Lindsay, if you actually go in and create your ads manager account, we're not able to share that with you. But if you create your own account, you're able to go in and filter by that, you know, to just remove the 18, 24, 25, 34, and you can play around with it. Um, and it's great. Um, so that's kind of best kept secret. And um, if you just create your ads manager account, you can go in and, and filter by that. Um, but apart from that, there was just a question on CMS, Sarah. So I just, I answered that one, but nothing... Nothing specific to um, what you've just mentioned, but I think lots of interest. Um, and I hope, I think it's it's easier once you see it all together. Yeah, perfect. And yeah, as, as Katie mentioned here, you can have a play around with, you know, trying to find what available audience is there for your target audience. So, you know, I have refined this by different ages and, you know, females and with certain interests, but you can take out all of the interests and just kind of have a look here um, and see, um, you know, the available audience size. Um, and then going, moving on to next, we're now going to be at the ad group level, or sorry, the ad level. So this is where, um, as Katie mentioned, we'll either um, upload in-feed ads or um, link Spark ads. So for this case, this would I would use Spark ads, and this is normally best practice. Um, if I, my um, the brand or you work with a creator that has um, a TikTok profile as well, 
So you just toggle on here, use TikTok account to deliver Spark ads. Now, because this is a demo, um, I don't have an account that I can link. Um, so I'll just see if there's anything on the demo. Um, or else here as well, you can use the authorized account or post. So if there is a creator that you're working with, this is where you can use the, the post that they've authorized for you to use. Um, and then you would just here, um, click add TikTok post. So you can select any of the videos um, from your TikTok profile. And um, it will just really easily um, link the video. When you're using a Spark ad, it is um, important to note that you can't change the text. So whatever is published um, on the profile will be used um, as the text for the ad as well. And then here are those famous interactive add-ons that Katie mentioned, and we can have a look through here. So again, you know, any of the stickers, um, they're really great um, and easy to use. And you just pop them on um, and customize them accordingly as well. Um, then we can put in the URL, so the destination website or the landing page that I want my um, users to go to. Um, and you can change this as well after the, um, the ad has gone live. But as I mentioned, I would avoid in the first seven to 10 days making too many changes because, of course, we are in the learning phase during that. Um, again, <clears throat> here is where we will um, select the TikTok pixel, so it should come up here. Um, and then you can also do um, add in UTNs as well and just for um, impression tracking and click tracking as well. Just, it will all be captured on the pixel, but if you want to just have additional tracking there. Um, if we're not using Spark ads, so if we're doing in-feed ads, you can select, set a custom identity here. So this is where you will put up um, your own um, uh, profile photo um, and your own custom handle as well. So say if you don't have a TikTok profile and it I want to have, you know, Sarah ads, that can be my um, custom handle and I'll put in a profile photo there as well. Then what I'll do is I'll upload um, a video here or from the library. If you're using the TikTok Creative Center, you can upload it from directly from the library and um, any of the videos that you've created. And then you can pop in whatever text you like. And we actually have smart text as well. So it will prom prompt you um, with keywords or phrases um, that um, the system would, would suggest that you use to promote the ad. Um, and again, then it will be very much the same, adding the URL and then the tracking too. You will be able to see all the previews here and add um, multiple videos. So again, we recommend three to five videos. Um, and then once all that has been completed, you can just click submit and your ad will go into review for about 30 minutes to an hour and then start delivering as well once it's passed all our um, policy checks. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a very quick overview on how to set up a traffic campaign using both Spark and Infeed ads. Um, again, here, you know, you can create custom audiences, um, manage your, sorry, sorry. you can create custom audiences, manage your comments, um, you know, uh, create creatives in the created center and also um, have access to your pixel as well. Um, so just conscious of time. Um, Sarah, uh, just before you go, sorry, I was going to get you to show, you know, if you needed help, like if where you can submit a ticket, if you want to just show that, that's kind of a great way to. Um, that's to, actually, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So if you're looking to raise a ticket, what you'll do is go to here, the help center. Um, and we should, um, all around here are, um, any, it's basically any questions that you may have will be answered through here. So for example, setting up the pixel. Um, and then we should also, you should also be able to um, raise a ticket from here as well. This is a demo account, so it's slightly different, but there will be um, customer support just under the question mark or advertiser support, sorry, under the question mark item uh, that will come up as well. Um, and then everything else is all available here. So you can manage your billing payments, um, and the help center is a really great tool. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, if there's anywhere along the way where it's measurement ads, billing, or even just pre-launch resources, you can all find them here. Um, and it's a really great tool as well. Yeah, super. So there was no, I don't think any other technical questions in the class, well, possible to get the webinar on insights into the creative center and using that. Um, so Lindsay, I did a, in the Q&A on Friday, so that was recorded, uh, near the end, if you want to skip through, I answer a question on the Creative Centre, and then at the end, I actually go through the whole 
creative center like feature it's very easy to use I have a lot of faith in you even just by seeing the questions that you're asking that you'll have no no issue navigating this but if you wanted to check out the Q&A um, I think there's been a, a couple of questions on the recording and um, we will chat to Fran and, and Annabelle and team um, to make sure that everyone's got the, the the recordings of all the sessions including today and if you've any colleagues that weren't able to join definitely tell them to to share and and catch up um but otherwise thank you so so much for an hour of your time and and all of the engagement um jam-packed I know there was so much information even there I was learning lots of stuff and um, but it is recorded so you can go back and take notes and um, and you know let us know in in the chat when you've created your in the forum when you've created your um your ads manager account and if you want any help there and, and you can expect to be reached out to by a TikTok representative just like Sarah and her team over the next you know potentially week or so so if you're ready to get going and um, even let us know and we'll see what we can do to help and um, but thank you so so much everyone and we will see you all soon and keep in touch with us in the community group and uh, we might see you again thanks everyone and thank you Sarah bye everyone